you can drop significant weight and still struggle with belly fat. Here's why. Abdominal fat isn't simply the layer beneath your skin. There's also visceral fat packed tightly around internal organs like your stomach, liver, and pancreas. This is the dangerous fat driving chronic diseases, killing people today. Visceral fat fuels diabetes development, fatty liver disease, cardiovascular problems, and even cancer progression. But here's what most people don't realize. Visceral fat and mitochondrial dysfunction feed each other in a vicious cycle. Visceral fat releases inflammatory molecules that actively destroy your mitochondria, those cellular power plants responsible for burning fat and producing energy. And when mitochondria break down, your body becomes trapped in fat storage mode, accumulating even more visceral fat. Today, I'm showing you the fastest way to specifically target visceral fat while simultaneously repairing mitochondrial function. We'll cover the best foods and drinks to incorporate into your regimen that address both problems at once. Then I'll show you the exercises, giving you the biggest bang for your buck, burning visceral fat while building new mitochondria. Let's start with food because what you eat daily either feeds this destructive cycle or systematically reverses it. Weapon, hay shown, carotenoid rich foods. One of the most powerful weapons against visceral fat and mitochondrial damage are carotenoid rich foods. Carotenoids are natural plant pigments. They give carrots that orange hue, make tomatoes red, and create spinach's dark green color. But this goes beyond color. Carotenoids function as powerful antioxidants. This matters tremendously because visceral fat accumulation stems from energy excess that eventually triggers inflammation and disrupted metabolism. And this same inflammation directly damages your mitochondria. Carotenoids reduce oxidative stress by neutralizing free radicals, unstable molecules that damage both cells and mitochondrial membranes. By eliminating free radicals, carotenoids help stabilize gene expression. Specifically, carotenoids can activate genes that burn more fat while suppressing genes signaling fat storage. But there's a critical mitochondrial benefit here. When you reduce oxidative stress, you protect mitochondrial membranes from breakdown. Healthy mitochondrial membranes mean efficient ATP production and superior fat burning capacity. An interesting randomized double blind trial in Japan examined whether carotenoid intake affects visceral fat. They found that just eight weeks of eating carotenoid rich vegetables reduced visceral fat, uh, especially in the group randomized to high lycopene and low lutein consisting of carrots and shibiki cabbage in that study. But I wanna emphasize all four groups eating carotenoid rich vegetables lowered their visceral fat so how do you get these carotenoids from your diet? Just target your favorite colorful vegetables, things like carrots, sweet potatoes, bell peppers, spinach, squash, you name it. Any colorful vegetable or fruit is likely rich in some type of carotenoid, and it will help you lose visceral fat while protecting your mitochondria. Uh, weapon, hash two, catechins, green tea, uh, after carotenoids. Another special compound you need to target is catechins. These are flavonoid polyphenols, which also act as antioxidants and reduce inflammation. My favorite way to get catechins is by drinking green tea. You hear it constantly, green tea burns fat. And it does. It accomplishes this because it's rich in catechins. These compounds fundamentally change how your body handles fat, specifically visceral fat. But they also powerfully support mitochondrial function in ways most people never hear about. Catechins help with fat regulation in multiple ways. First, catechins boost fat oxidation and energy expenditure. They stimulate the nervous system to burn more fat and elevate overall metabolism. This happens partly by improving mitochondrial efficiency, making your existing mitochondria work better. On top of that, catechins also inhibit fat processing enzymes like lipase, so they block dietary fat from being absorbed initially. But here's the mitochondrial connection that changes everything. Catechins particularly EGCG, epigallocatechin gallate, activate AMPK, the master metabolic switch that triggers mitochondrial biogenesis. That's the creation of brand new mitochondria. When you drink green tea consistently, you're not just burning fat, you're literally building more cellular power plants to burn even more fat. This creates a positive feedback loop. The reason green tea is so powerful is that it also contains caffeine, which works synergistically with catechins to enhance fat utilization and mitochondrial performance. There was a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized trial in Japan showing that just 12 weeks of drinking catechin-enriched green tea, about 600 milligrams catechins daily, resulted in significant visceral fat reduction. Just 
remember, most green teas are high in catechins. But to really maximize the benefit, you want to target minimally processed green teas. Those would be matcha or sencha teas, the visceral fat mitochondria, vicious cycle. Now, before we get to exercise, let me explain exactly why visceral fat and mitochondrial dysfunction are locked together. Understanding this connection transforms how you approach fat loss. Visceral fat isn't just stored energy sitting there inert. It's metabolically active tissue that secretes inflammatory compounds called cytokines. These inflammatory molecules circulate throughout your bloodstream, creating systemic inflammation. And one of the primary targets of this inflammation is your mitochondria. Uh, here's the destructive cycle. Visceral fat accumulates around organs and releases inflammatory cytokines. These inflammatory molecules damage mitochondrial membranes and disrupt the electron transport chain, the machinery producing ATP. Damaged mitochondria become less efficient at burning fat for fuel. Instead of oxidizing fatty acids properly, they start producing more reactive oxygen species, more free radicals. More free radicals mean more oxidative stress, which damages even more mitochondria. It also signals your body to store more fat, particularly visceral fat, around organs. More visceral fat produces more inflammatory cytokines, damaging more mitochondria. You can see the vicious cycle. Visceral fat destroys mitochondria. Damaged mitochondria cause more visceral fat accumulation, which destroys more mitochondria. Research published in Cell Metabolism showed that visceral fat specifically impairs mitochondrial function in liver cells and muscle tissue. People with high visceral fat demonstrated. 35, 40% lower mitochondrial density, significantly reduced ATP production capacity, impaired fat oxidation even during exercise, higher levels of mitochondrial oxidative damage. Uh, another study in diabetes care found that visceral fat accumulation directly correlates with mitochondrial dysfunction. The more visceral fat someone carried, the worse their mitochondrial function tested. But here's the encouraging finding. When participants lost visceral fat through diet and exercise, mitochondrial function improved proportionally. Some participants saw mitochondrial capacity improve by 50% or more as visceral fat decreased. This reveals something critical. You cannot effectively lose visceral fat long-term without fixing your mitochondria. And you cannot optimize mitochondrial function while carrying excess visceral fat. You must address both simultaneously the exercise multiplier. Now, in the grand scheme of things, anything leading to an energy deficit or calorie deficit will help you lose weight and visceral fat. But targeting these right foods and drinks will help you get there much faster while protecting mitochondria. And once you've dialed in the right foods, the correct exercise regimen becomes that magical multiplier. In fact, the correct type of exercise is absolutely essential when it comes to losing visceral fat quickly and repairing mitochondrial function. And here's why exercise is so uniquely powerful. It's one of the few interventions that simultaneously reduces visceral fat while building brand new mitochondria. We have studies like this, meta-analysis of 117 studies showing that even though both diet and exercise can reduce visceral fat, diet has a larger effect on total body weight loss, while exercise tends to have superior effects on reducing visceral fat specifically. And Separate research shows exercise also triggers the greatest mitochondrial biogenesis. There's an older but very interesting study that showed just how powerful a small dose of exercise can be. In this study, just two 45-minute cycling sessions per week at 75% of VO2, peak for two months, reduced visceral fat by 48%, almost half in just two months. Not only that, but this group also improved insulin sensitivity by 41% and lost 18% of subcutaneous fat. But here's what the study didn't measure directly, but we know happens. This type of exercise also triggers massive mitochondrial biogenesis. Studies using similar protocols show 25-40% increases in mitochondrial density within 8 to 12 weeks. This wasn't strenuous exercise by any means, that they had to do twice a week. What they did in the study was measure intensity as VO2 peak as opposed to VO2 max. So it's hard to tell exactly what 75% looked like for that average participant. But since people in the study were likely not professional athletes, I assume their VO2 peak was lower than their VO2 max zone three range, or about 70, 80% of maximum heart rate. So this exercise would actually put them in low moderate intensity. It's that intensity where you can still hold a conversation and speak in full sentences, but you just sound a little winded. And 
another interesting trend we see from those studies is that total body weight stayed about the same. So remarkable changes in dropping visceral fat and improving insulin sensitivity, even though there were no measurable changes on the scale. And this is such an important point that I constantly emphasize. Do not get discouraged if you're doing all the right things when it comes to nutrition and movement and proper exercise, but the weight just isn't coming off. More often than not, the scale is a pretty poor indicator of your progress because the number on the scale does not necessarily show changes in body composition, fat mass loss, or mitochondrial regeneration happening inside your cells. Best exercise type. Now, what's the best type of exercise that will help you lose visceral fat and repair mitochondria and help you do it fast? Well, uh, a recent systematic review and meta-analysis that looked at 84 randomized controlled trials showed that vigorous intensity aerobic exercise and high intensity interval training or HIT are the most effective exercise modalities for reducing visceral fat. And separate research shows these same exercise types trigger the greatest mitochondrial biogenesis. Here's why this matters. When you do moderate to vigorous aerobic exercise or HIT, you create an energy demand your current mitochondria cannot fully meet. This signals your cells, we need more power plants, build them now. This activates PGC1 alpha, the master regulator of mitochondrial biogenesis. PGC1 alpha tells your DNA to start manufacturing new mitochondria. Simultaneously, the exercise depletes stored glucose glycogen from muscles and liver. Once glycogen is depleted, your body must turn to fat, including visceral fat for fuel. So you're burning visceral fat while building the machinery to burn even more fat in the future. Resistance training was still beneficial, but just not as effective when looking specifically at visceral fat reduction and mitochondrial biogenesis. And that's not to say forget about resistance training. In fact, resistance training is a must for maintaining muscle mass, and it's important for overall health and metabolism. And muscle tissue houses most of your mitochondria. So preserving muscle preserves mitochondrial capacity. But if you want to lose visceral fat fast and regenerate mitochondria, like over the next few months, it's probably better to dial up your cardio, high it versus aerobic. Now, if we're choosing between HIT and aerobic exercise, there really isn't a big difference between effectiveness for visceral fat loss. The studies that look at direct comparisons show that both modalities are very similar, with no statistically significant difference between the two in adults. But for mitochondrial biogenesis specifically, both work through slightly different mechanisms. HIT creates intense energy demands that strongly activate PGC1 alpha. You get dramatic mitochondrial signaling, even from shorter sessions. The high intensity forces your existing mitochondria to work at maximum capacity, triggering the we need more power plants response. Moderate intensity aerobic exercise activates mitochondrial biogenesis through sustained energy demand. You get continuous fat oxidation and prolonged activation of metabolic pathways. This builds both mitochondrial number and improves their efficiency. Now, if you really want to dig into the data and, and literature, there may be a small signal that when it comes to HIIT exercises, you may get a little more effectiveness with running as opposed to cycling. And there's some studies showing that in kids and young adults under age 24, HIT may be more effective than aerobic exercise. But honestly, we're just splitting hairs at this point. At the end of the day, the way I see it, it doesn't matter if you do high intensity interval training or if you do aerobic exercise or whether for cardio you choose cycling or running or rowing or dancing. The best exercise is the one you'll actually stick with because consistency beats the perfect plan every time. So that textbook perfect HIT protocol that you just dread and only do twice a month is always going to lose out to that walk you enjoy and are able to do several times a week consistently. And the ideal protocol, at least based on the studies available for both visceral fat loss and mitochondrial regeneration, would probably be exercise you can do at least two to three times a week for at least 45 minutes each. And whatever you choose, it just has to be at least moderate to vigorous intensity, meaning you're getting your heart rate to about 70-80% of your maximum capacity. And if you're not into measuring or tracking your heart rate, a good rule of thumb is to do a talk test. You know, you're doing moderate intensity activity if you can talk in full sentences, but you sound a little out of breath. And, you know, you're doing vigorous intensity exercise if you can only speak in a few words before pausing and taking a breath, the dose-dependent effect. And the beautiful thing about exercise is the fact that the effects you get 
are dose dependent, meaning the more you do, the better are the results for both visceral fat and mitochondria. There was a recent study in the British Journal of Sports Medicine that showed participants who exercised more or with higher intensity frequently saw proportionally greater reductions in visceral fat. Similarly, research on mitochondrial biogenesis shows that training volume and intensity directly correlate with new mitochondria production. More training stimulus equals more mitochondrial adaptation. And by contrast, they did not see that dose-dependent response with caloric restriction or dieting, meaning there's a limit to how much you can restrict calories, and you really don't see any additional benefit after a certain point. In fact, um, excessive calorie restriction can actually harm mitochondrial function through metabolic stress. So you do not need to starve yourself to lose belly fat or repair mitochondria. Quite the opposite, actually. Get enough calories that still keep you in a small calorie deficit, but you can gradually step up your activity and exercise if you want to lose your visceral fat faster and regenerate mitochondria more completely. Foods that target both. Now let me give you additional foods beyond carotenoids and catechins that specifically address both visceral fat and mitochondrial function. Fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, and sardines. The omega-3 seconds reduce inflammation from visceral fat, but EPA and DHA also incorporate directly into mitochondrial membranes, improving their efficiency and ATP production. Dark leafy greens like spinach and kale, low calorie density helps create the deficit for fat loss. But they're also rich in magnesium, which is essential for ATP production in mitochondria. Without adequate magnesium, your mitochondria cannot produce energy efficiently. Berries like blueberries and raspberries contain the carotenoids we discussed, but polyphenols in berries also activate mitochondrial biogenesis pathways while helping reduce visceral fat accumulation. That's walnuts and almonds. Healthy fats improve mitochondrial membrane function. Walnuts contain urolithin A, precursors that trigger mitophagy, the removal of damaged mitochondria, so new ones can be built. They also help reduce visceral fat through improved satiety. Dark chocolate, 85% cacao or higher. Epicatechin in dark chocolate increases mitochondrial volume by 30, 50% in studies. Flavonoids reduce visceral fat accumulation and magnesium supports ATP production. All these foods work on both problems simultaneously, reducing visceral fat while supporting or building mitochondria. Visceral fat and mitochondrial dysfunction are two sides of the same metabolic problem. You cannot effectively solve one without addressing the other. Visceral fat destroys your mitochondria through inflammatory cytokines. Damaged mitochondria make you better at storing visceral fat and worse at burning it. But when you break this cycle with targeted nutrition and consistent exercise, both problems reverse simultaneously. Carotenoid-rich foods and catechin-rich green tea reduce visceral fat while protecting mitochondria. Moderate to vigorous cardio burns visceral fat while building new mitochondria through PGC1-alpha activation. You can reduce visceral fat by nearly 50% in just 8 to 12 weeks, while increasing mitochondrial capacity by 25-40%. Remember, the scale is a poor indicator of progress. Focus on waist circumference, energy levels, and how clothes fit. Stay consistent with the protocol. Address both visceral fat and mitochondria together. I hope this was helpful. Stay healthy and uh, I'll see you in the next video.